Welcome to WordPress Accessibility Meetup. We are going to be doing a live audit of the Pi Calendar plugin, which is super fun. And we'll talk more about what that is here shortly. Uh, I have a few announcements. If you haven't previously been before, we have a Facebook group that you can join to connect with other people between meetups. You can find that if you go to Facebook and you just search WordPress accessibility or the URL is facebook.com slash groups slash WordPress dot accessibility. Everyone always asks, is this being recorded? The answer is yes, it is being recorded. You can find all of our upcoming meetups and recordings of past meetups in one place if you go to equalizedigital.com slash meetup. That will redirect you to a much longer URL and you'll be able to find it. it. Takes us about two weeks to get corrected captions and a full transcript. And it might be a little bit delayed this time of year because we are going to be off for a holiday break next week, but uh, we will get it up as quickly as we can. If you want to get notified when the recording is available, please feel free to join our email list. You can do that at equalizedigital.com slash focus dash state. And that will give you upcoming event announcements, news. And then when we publish the recordings, we always include links to those as well. We are releasing the audio. Alex inspired us to do that. So if you prefer to listen to the recordings instead of going to YouTube and watching them, you can find the recordings from meetup events on our podcast, accessibilitycraft.com. Um, and then finally, it is the end of the year and we are starting to look at what 2024 looks like. We have some speaker slots available and we are also looking for additional sponsors to help us cover the cost of the meetup. Uh, the WordPress Foundation unfortunately told us that they can't cover the cost of live captions. So they said, go out and find sponsors. So if you would be interested in sponsoring a meetup or if you'd be interested in speaking in 2024, please reach out to us. You can email meetup at equalizedigital.com and that will go to myself and Paula. So who am I? If you haven't been before, I'm Amber Hines. I'm the CEO of Equalize Digital and the lead organizer of the meetup. We're a certified B corporation that specializes in WordPress accessibility. And we have a free WordPress plugin that you can find on the wordpress.org repo called Accessibility Checker that helps you audit your websites for accessibility problems. So I have one sponsor that I want to thank tonight. And also I have to give a shout out because Texas Closed Captions, not only are they donating their services to us tonight and have and they've been doing that for a few of our meetups, which we very much appreciate, but they have been the captioner who has been captioning all of our events since the beginning of the meetup a couple of years ago. They have done a phenomenal job. I have been on many other events with live captioners. And I have to tell you, I have never seen anyone match the accuracy or the speed. And I'm very impressed when they caption code <laughs> and developer speak and all of that kind of stuff. So we really appreciate Texas Closed Captioned. Um, they're a woman owned small business that is based near me in Austin. And in addition to doing real-time captioning, they do remote cart services and some transcription for post events as well. I highly recommend learning about them. You can learn about them if you go to texascaption.com. The next events that you want to be aware of are the right after New Year's on Thursday, January 4th at 10 a.m. U.S. Central Time, Abby Wood is going to be talking about writing accessible copy. So if you are a copywriter and you want to make sure that your copy works for everyone, this is definitely a meetup to attend. And then on Monday, January 15th, the same time slot at 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time, I'm going to be doing a presentation about building a low-code accessible WooCommerce website. I am going to build one <laughs> before then. So I, I like 
said I agreed that I would do it because we didn't have a speaker. And now I'm I'm sitting here being like, hmm, I actually have to do this. But I'm going to have a case study. It's going to be available. I'm going to set stuff up on Printful because everyone always asks if they can get my Make WordPress Accessible t-shirt. So literally, that's what we're going to sell. <laughs> and we're going to give money back to... Um, WordPress Accessibility Day to help fund the event next year. But I am going to try and do it without coding anything or only maybe doing minimal CSS. And uh, we'll report back on how you can make an accessible WooCommerce or not. We'll all find out on January 15th without code or whether it needs a lot of code. So that's what that meetup will be about. And then um, on Thursday, February 1st, we are excited to have Michaela Letterman coming back to talk about Do More with Less Aria. She was scheduled earlier this year and had an emergency come up in her family and had to reschedule. So we're excited to have this talk come back. So please tune in for that at the beginning of February. Today's plugin, I am very excited to announce. Let me pop them up here. So... Everyone can see Jonathan and Elijah, the makers of uh, Pi Calendar. Pi Calendar lets you effortlessly turn any post in your WordPress website into a calendar event. Um, Jonathan, Elijah, do you want to tell us a little bit about the plugin, just so everyone who's watching has some background on what it is and how you've made it? Sure. So my name is Jonathan. I'm the co-founder along with Elijah here. And um, this plugin came about because, of course, like most good plugins, I needed it on a client project. And we had a very specific way that it needed to be built and all of the existing calendar plugins just simply wouldn't work. So of course, I had to turn to my lovely assistant, ChatGPT, to help me build a rudimentary version of what eventually would become PyCalendar. And the the result after spending uh, you know a good amount of time on that was good enough that I thought this might have some legs to be a real plugin. So I went to Elijah in the very, very beginning of 2023. I think it might have been January 1st of 2023 and said, I have this idea. And we started architecting a calendar plugin that was just super flexible. We wanted it to work in the confines of the existing you know, WordPress features and kind of functionality that already exists. And what we came up with was, was PyCalendar. So the idea is that it just does events and a calendar really well and not a whole lot else. We joke that we have an internal simplicity gun and we like to shoot that simplicity gun at stuff all the time. And um, and we're really proud of, of what we've come up with. I think there's already some love. Thank you, Karen, in the chat for the heart. We appreciate it. And Elijah, if you have anything else you wanted to toss in the ring too? Yeah, no. Um, I think that with Pi Calendar, our goal really was just elegance, simplicity, stay out of the way, don't be noisy, do what it needs to do, and that's about it. And uh, hopefully we've accomplished that goal. And uh, I appreciate Jonathan bringing me onto the project early on, and I'm I'm happy with what we've achieved so far. Awesome. Well, we really appreciate that you um, came today to let us audit it and that you're open to feedback. Um, Alex, I know your camera's not working, but weirdly, I need you to turn it on in order for me to get you up on the screen, <laughs> if you don't mind. Okay, there we go. So everyone, Alex's camera isn't working today. We can figure it out, but he is here. Hi, Alex. Hello. Uh, so just a few guidelines before I hand it over to Alex. Um, so the the big thing I like to emphasize is the point of this meetup is, you know, to give the tester, in this case, Alex, um, the room to speak and share their experiences. Um, it's you know, helpful if we, you know, we'll pause and give everybody time to ask questions. So if you can put them in the Q&A, that's a little bit um, easier for me to track um, rather than the chat. Um, but we want to try not to be super argumentative or whatever, because ultimately it comes down to how it sounds on the screen reader and, and, and how usable it is. 
And then of course, number two is for everyone who's watching, this is not about bashing the plugins. It takes a lot of bravery to be willing to come up here and let people test your thing in public and give you public feedback. Um, so our goal is always to make this as positive as possible. And we want everyone to applaud Jonathan and Elijah and Pi Calendar for, you know, wanting to make a more accessible product because we think that's awesome. So let me stop sharing and I will let you take over sharing, Alex. All right, and Alex is using NVDA screen reader, right? Yes. And this is the speed at which I mainly listen at, but be nice to everyone and slow it down. What did we decide on these? 40? 45, I think. Maybe 40. 48, 40, 46, 45. Try 45. Calendar, WordPress Accessibility Meetup, Mozilla Firefox Private Browsing, Calendar, WordPress Accessibility Meetup Document, Submenu Link, WordPress Accessibility Meetup. Actually, Let's go 40 so that we can maybe get it on the recording, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Voice, variant, combo, bot rate, slide 44, 44, 41, 40. Calendar, WordPress. 40. Do you want to try turning on the speech reader also? NVDA reference tools, submenu This team. never works out, but maybe today. Well, we'll see. Today. It depends on where it shows up on your screen. Sometimes it blocks too WordPress. much. I think in this instance, it's going to be okay. Miracle. Okay. So I'm actually seeing something that I think we chatted about a little bit in our pre-show and I'm probably going to edit it and um, have you refresh the page, but I want to point out. So Pi Calendar has this really awesome feature, which I turned on on the short code, which is that it can adapt to your operating system and color mode preference. And I don't know if you want to explain that a little bit, Jonathan or Elijah, what you're doing, but we noticed that there's a bug with this this specific theme, which is 2024, where it caused an issue because I turned that setting on. Yeah, so on the screen, it looks like there's uh, a bunch of days listed with uh, little black dots and there's there's just a white little rectangle. Um, but like you were saying, Amber, it's because there's a shortcode parameter for dark mode. And by default, of course, PyCalendar is in light mode, which will work with the vast majority of websites. but if your theme or if the website you've built allows automatic switching between light and dark mode, Pi Calendar can do that. And so that's what, you know, Alex's screen here is is showing. His system appears to be in dark mode, but this this blank 2024 theme doesn't have an automatic dark mode function. So it looks a little wonky at the moment. Yeah, so I just up Updated that and removed that setting from the short code. I don't know if you want to refresh your page, Alex, and then we can see what it looks like in normal. Ah, now, now we can read text. So Very I, interesting because I don't go out of my way for dark mode. Everything is dark. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, you didn't realize jokes. that your system was in dark mode? <laughs> I really had no idea. <laughs> well, I, for anyone who hasn't gotten to hang out with Alex in person, also, generally, his monitor is turned off. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I bet your battery lasts way longer than everyone else. Oh, it does. Yeah. Um, so we can see it now. But I think I thought it was interesting. I love that you guys included that. But I do think it might be worth noting in your documentation that if your theme does not have dark mode styles, not to disable this. And that's a, like, I think this is a really good accessibility feature, but if a user turns it on and they don't understand and they don't check, like I didn't, I have my system in light mode and I did not go check. So I didn't see that problem. So it's kind of interesting. Um, all right, you want to go ahead and explore the page, Alex, and let us know what you find. combo box to left month list. So we have a choose view here. We'll just explore with the what it comes selected with. Heading level two, December twenty twenty three. Toggle button unavailable, not pressed today. Toggle button not pressed. Toggle button not pressed. Those are two unlabeled buttons. 
Table with 17 so those, rows and three columns, row one column one time. Those buttons, I think, would change the the month that you're seeing. Column two event. Row two time column one through three December 18th, 2023. Row three December 18th, 2023 time column one seven p.m. dash 30 p.m. Event December 18th, 2023 column two by calendar blue and accessibility on it. Alex Stein and Amber Hines. Row four December 18th, 2023 time column one through three December 25th, 2023. Row 5 time December 25th, 2023, column 1 all day. Event December 25th, 2023, column 2 closed for Christmas. Row 6 December 25th, 2023, December 18th, 2023, time column 1 through 3 December 26th, 2023. Row 7 time December 26th, 2023, column 1 all day. Event December 26th, 2023, column 2 closed for Christmas. Row 8 December 26th, 2023, December 25th, 2023, December 18th, 2023, time column 1 through 3 December 27th, 2023. What do you this think is... you're hearing there? Alex? A very, very weirdly formatted table. So this, so the this list view has, I gave it two days. It has our event that we're at right now, which is a one-time event with like a start and a stop time. And then it has an all-day event that spans from December 25th to December 30th. And in this particular view, it's repeating um, like on each day. And then yeah. you're saying structurally, it sounds like a table. Structurally, it sounds a like a table, but it's not functioning like a table. Edge of table, December, edge of table, row nine time, December 27th, 2023, column one all day. Event December 27th, 2023, column 2 closed for Christmas. Edge of table, row 10, December 27th, 2023, edge of table, December, row 11, time December 28th. I don't know what this is. It's like a table inside a table. Yeah, so I think, like, looking at the HTML, um, I it, it's coded in a table. Could this be a list instead, like an unordered list? Jonathan and Elijah, like, that's what I think the expectation would be. Yeah. Um, yeah, a list would definitely be more functional. Uh, I was actually looking at this with voiceover before we came on and realized how odd the list view is laid out. Um, I will say that most of our testing focus when we do test with keyboard nav and, and screen readers is on the, um, the grid view, the normal traditional calendar view. So this one definitely flew under the radar. Okay, we'll take a look at another view. Choose new combo box collapse month main combo box month classic one of five. You know, real Which... quick before you select that, Alex, something else that I wanted to point out: Alexander. those events, they did not read as links to Alex, but they're the the day, both the literal date and then the day of the week. The reason why they're underlined. And then I noticed if I put my mouse over them, they lose their underline is they have an A tag on them, even though they're not links. And so they're adopting the link styling that the website has. Um, and so I think if they're not links, you wouldn't want to use an A tag. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, Elijah. We will have corrected that in an upcoming version because there will be an individual day view. So when you click that, it will take you to the single day is that is that right is that what we decided right yeah so yeah i that, actually did not realize that those were actual anchors until i started working on this new feature where we needed to be able to click them and go to a day view but they're they're anchors without an href or anything currently which is not ideal but uh with the release we're working on those will actually function when you click them mm -hmm. so right, when so you when you click that what do you envision happening is it going to open a page or is it just going to manipulate what's displayed it'll just swap the view to a day view focused on the day that you clicked just like if you change the view to, uh, using the drop down at the top of the calendar so you need to be very careful to manage focus in this scenario because you're going to change context and you're going to have to be able to communicate to users what happened. Absolutely. And of course, if there is a back button, you need to make sure users end up where they started. Because if you're viewing January 14th and 
you get dropped back at January 1st, that's going to turn into a very frustrating situation. Yeah. And a very common mistake, unfortunately. So you'd want to see um, parameters get added to the URL every time the view changes so that someone can use the back button to go back to the previous view that they were on. Does that sound correct? Not necessarily. I was referring to a UI back button. Okay. Because if you're going to view a day, there's got to be a way to go back. Mm hmm so you just changed to the month view, and I'm sorry, I started talking, so you may have stopped the screen reader, but did it tell you when you toggled the, the view of the calendar? See. I did not think I Heading changed level two, it. December, choose view combo box, collapse month, classic. I did indeed change it. That's very interesting. Heading level two, view. a couple times. Combo month, list two of five. Calendar, WordPress accessibility meetup document, main landmark, choose view combo box month, list collapsed. No, it does not announce anything. Month classic. So heading level two to choose new combo box. Aria live would it's be what we would want on there, right? Probably not super required here because this is I mean, it keeps there, you on the combo box. If there are more filters here, I'd be a little bit more concerned about it. But since since it's just a view selector, uh, it's probably fine. Cool. Easy enough to figure out for users. Mm -hmm. Heading level two, December 2023. Toggle button unavailable, not pressed today. Toggle button not pressed. Toggle button not pressed. Table with seven rows and seven columns. Row one, column one, son. Column two, mom. Column three, two. Column four, red. Column five, foo. Column six, try. Column seven, sat. So the infamous day abbreviations. These do not work well with screen readers because you just never know how it's going to read. So Four do you words. recommend an ARIA label that has actually fully written out the day? You could try it, but ARIA labels normally don't work in these contexts because these aren't dynamic uh, interactive elements. So you'd rather just see the day fully written out? Just day fully written out. Row 2, Sun, column 1, 26. Mod, column 2, 27. 2, column 3, 28. Wet, column 4, 29. Two column five thirty. Fry column six one. Sat column seven two. Row three sun column one three. Mod column two four. Two column three five. Wet column four six. So there's nothing here that actually told me I was viewing previous days at the end of November, but from context I I could figure it out. So this is a so this one oh wait, no, it is so this is a table is i'm wondering actually is the top row headers oh it is row 413 two column 514 row 521 fry column 622 sat column 7 20, edge of table 23 row 6 3, fry, 2 wet 2 mod column 225 closed for christmas closed for christmas two column 326 wet column 427 two column 528 fry column 629 sat column 730 row 7 sun column 131 closed for christmas uh, doesn't communicate to me when the event starts and ends on here, though. That's a problem. Like yeah, if you had so... closed for Christmas on the 25th, I uh, see it again on the 31st, but not on the 26th, 7th, 8th, 9th, or 30th. Mm -hmm. Do you have any ideas about handling that? Uh, you would probably just have to list it for the day, uh, for all those days in this type of view. One thing yes. I'm curious oh, about, if I can ask, is uh, on the calendar on December 18th, there is an event with a start time. I'm just curious, did I, did, oh, did we go I over that? that? I was wondering if it's... Went to mod 25, sun if it's... Two went column 420, two column three nine, mod column two pi calendar, blue accessibility audit, Alex Stein and Amber Hines. 7p. 18. 7p. Okay, so there's the start tab. Okay, so that that is probably to do with the fact that this event we're on now is a single day versus the other one span multiple days. So I guess we'll need to look into why that differs. 
So one way you, if, if you need to visually leave it the way you have, you could have screen reader only text on the other dates that's visually hidden, but then it would still be announced to a screen reader. Potentially. I do think like the, the abbreviations aren't super great. Like I would, it should probably say like 7 PM instead of 7 P. Um, uh, the other thing too, if these events ever become clickable links, you can't hide them like that. That so, would be an accessibility violation. Yes. If the, but if the main one is still clickable, you just end up with double then. You basically hide the one from screen readers that's visual, right? But then you'd have a clickable visual one. It'd be better if the clickable one could fit, you could figure out how to get it to read across every day. Yeah, because what you don't want is you don't want the rest of them to be clickable or else when cited users tab, they'll lose the focus. Yeah. So I'm curious your opinion on this, Alex, because we've done some accessibility testing with other um, screen reader users through our consulting work. And we've always landed on the recommendation that a default view should always be a list view and not a grid view on a calendar. Do you feel the same way or are you fine with the grid view? Because that could be interesting for them as far as what they'd recommend to their users, which view should be default. I would prefer a list view to be default. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So this event, that Pi Calendar event, you should be able to open it and get a modal with more information about that event. Yeah, well, there's nothing there that says I can do that. So that's got to be converted into a button. Yeah, so right now it's a link, but the problem with it is it has a tab index of zero on it. Uh, it's got to be something more than that because it's not even read as a link. 18, 7P. Pi calendar plugin accessibility audit, 7P. I wonder if it's focusable. Row 6 closed for Christmas. Row 5, 7P, oh, pi calendar plugin accessibility. See, these are actually focusable because of the tab index of zero, but it's not read as a semantic link. Yeah, why is that not reading as a link? So it's on the, the text. So... See if you can trigger the text, like the name. Main landmark close event details button. Pi calendar plugin accessibility audit. Alex Stein and Amber Hines. Separator. Starts. 12 18 2023, 7 p.m. Ends. 12 18 2023, 8 30 p.m. Separator. Join us as Alex Stein, engineer accessibility consultant, and Amber Hines, CEO of eDigital, for real time accessibility view post. Add the calendar view post. Add the calendar. Link add Pi calendar plugin accessibility audit. Alex Stein and Amber Hines event to Apple calendar. Link add Pi Calendar Plugin Accessibility Audit. Alex Stein and Amber Hines Event to Outlook Calendar. Link add Pi Calendar Plugin Accessibility Audit. Alex Stein and Amber Hines Event to Outlook Web. Link Calendar. Link add Pi Calendar Plugin Accessibility Audit. Alex Stein and Amber Hines Event to Office 365 Calendar. Link add Pi Calendar Plugin Accessibility Audit. Alex Stein and Amber Hines Event to Google Calendar. Event times are listed in your local time zone. America Chicago. Content Info Landmark. Pi Calendar Accessibility. Heading about Link History. Yeah, it seems reasonable to me. It Whatever that element is, it does trigger the pop-up. Out of list button, nope. Main so, landmark calendar. Choose view heading level two to seven. Actually, content info the landmark reason heading. why it doesn't read is because it doesn't have an href on it. Oh, yep. By calendar. So link anytime link. you don't have an href, it's not going to announce that it's a link. Um, but really, it should be a button because it just opens and closes the modal. Yep. And Main landmark. The other thing here is this should actually be a modal because it currently is not. Link is at it? Link at it's, it doesn't constrain focus, so it's not a modal, whatever it is. It's an overlay. Can I ask a quick question about the constraint of focus? Yes. Okay. Um, so I noticed that when I was using voiceover and testing that it when I'm using the arrow keys to navigate, the focus moves outside of the modal without closing the modal or anything. But if you use tab, the focus should be trapped. Uh, I didn't realize those were two separate kind of concerns. I assumed if I had trapped the focus using tab that it would take care of the screen reader as well. Is uh, that a common issue? If you trap focus for tab, that's a foolproof solution for someone with vision. 
Right. If you don't, so essentially role model or the HTML5 dialogue tag, it makes the rest of the document body inert to screen readers. So there's no use of virtual mode to see outside of the modal. So awesome. if your if your intent is to use a modal, it has to be an actual uh, role dialogue. Yeah, perfect. Uh, I put a link in the chat to that in the MDN docs for role dialogue. So, uh, but awesome, like the you. something you did really well here is the add to calendar links are all labeled with the name of the event which is good because I'm assuming if I had multiple events, there'd be multiple of those. So I think that's great. Rows event details button. Table with seven rows and seven column, row five, mom, good. column two, seven, P, by calendar, Pugin, accessibility, audit, Alex Steiner. And focus is returned. So that's really good. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to go back up to those, those two unlabeled toggles uh, and, Toggle button, and not next month. change one of them? Oh, we get the next month announcement. You must be using the title attribute on here. So why does it say it now, but it didn't the first time earlier? So the mystical title rule and accessibility, never use it for this reason. So the reason that we avoid using title and accessibility is because every screen reader reads it differently. For example, if you're just using your arrow keys within BDA, it won't read it. But if you use a certain focus command, such as tab, uh, shift tab, your button navigator command, it reads it under those circumstances. Title is so, unpredictable. Yeah, so in this instance, you just need to switch title to ARIA and label. But you're, you're I'm curious it, right? about... Not do both. Oh, sorry. Replace it yeah. entirely, right? Not do both. Yeah, because then you run the risk of actually getting a duplicate announcement. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about them being toggle buttons and your thought on this, Alex, because because they're having like the pressed equal are pressed equals false which is what's making them read out as toggles. And I'm not certain that I actually think these are toggle buttons. Yeah, they are not. It's just remove that attribute and they'll be fine. Mm -hmm. If you if you go forward a month. It doesn't change the state, so. Yeah, and it also didn't announce to you so what would you expect to hear? We visually saw the month change to January. Uh, a message such as now displaying January of 2024. Mm -hmm. You can do that within ARIA Live region. Um, so there's also a week view and a time-based week view. I don't know if you'd be interested in exploring those. Choose new, com choose new combo, combo box, month, list, week, time, grid, three of five. Calendar, WordPress accessibility, meet Heading level two, deck 31, 2023, Jan 6, 2024. Toggle button, not press today. Toggle button, not press. Toggle button, not press. Table with three rows and seven columns. Row one, column one, sun, 12, 31. Column two, mon, one, one. Column row two, closed for Christmas. Row one, sun, 12, 31. Row two, mon, one, one. Column two, New Year's Day. Two, one, two, column three. Wed 1, 3, column 4, 2, 1, 4, column 5, Fry 1, 5, column 6, Sat 1, 6, column 7, Edge of Table, Row 3, Fry 1, 5, column 6, 2, 1, 4, Wed 1, 2, 1, 2, Mon 1, 1, Sun 12, 31, column 1, Edge of Table, Blank. Row 2, closed for Christmas. Row 1, Sun 12, 31, column 2, Mon 1, 1. Row 2, New Year's Day, 2, 1, 2, column 3, Wed 1, 3, column 4, 2, 1, 4, column 5, Fry 1, 5, column 6, Sat 1, 6, column 6. Row 3, Sun 12, 31, column 1, Mon 1, 1, column 2, New Year's Day. Sun 12, 31, column 1, closed, Row 3. Mon 1, 1, column 2. Sun 12, 31, column 1. Row 2, 2, 1, 2, column 3, wet 1, 3, column 4, 2, 1, 1, 1, column 2, New Year's Day. Yeah, this is also very interesting because tab index of 0 and these events are block level elements. So it won't read this entire table all at once. 
not actually sure how you go about presenting this properly, but Because if all you heard was this, two one two column three one one three column four two one four column five five one five column six and one six column seven, it is not really a usable experience. Yeah, I think. I mean, I I think the way I would handle this kind of stuff and how we've advised our clients, and feel free to tell me if you think this is wrong, Alex, is that the list view should be the default and. I don't know, I haven't explored enough in your attributes if you have a way for people to like turn off different views, but you should just never allow someone to turn off the list view. And then if they choose to have this view or a grid view, they, you know, they they could, but there's still an alternative for a user that is the most accessible that doesn't require somebody to try and, because I don't even know if Alex, you know that there's an event on Thursday at 10 a.m., <laughs> right? Uh, without you having to use arrow keys to move through these. So I don't know if you have the same thought, but that's kind of one of the things I think about like providing guidance to users of your plugin is maybe not allowing them to ever turn off the list view. I guess it's... I'm curious from a like kind of philosophy standpoint, how heavy handed you would be. Like if let's say Amber, if you were the owner of Pi Calendar, is that just like, is that just a line that you, you know, just simply do not cross under any circumstance. And I'm just curious, like how you approach that. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the way I tend to look at things. Alex, do you have thoughts about that? Like, I, I, I guess the way I would think about it too, is you could also do so gravity forms. If you've used gravity forms, they have some things and some of which they had to keep for like legacies. Like if they remove this setting, it would break everyone's websites. But in the editor, they have a, a big warning that says this, this is using this field, like the date picker, it's not accessible or turning off your field labels is a WCAG violation. So I think that's another way you could do it is you could, think about like having more guidance in the plugin. Um, but if you're new and you don't have a ton of users, I would just not, not that you don't build, like there might be a use case for having a view like this, but just make sure that you also have the accessible version and that people can't say, oh, well, I only want the weak view. That yeah, makes sense. so this, this question has actually come up a time or two in uh, WordPress Gutenberg development. So there's been a couple thoughts in the past that it's kind of like this, okay, if we tell users they can't do this, they're just going to go figure out a way to do it. And I've always been of the perspective that, uh, yeah, they're just going to go do it, but at least they can't blame us for enabling them to make a stupid decision. Because yeah. if I mean, developers, I uh, if developers have a, a will, they will figure it out. <laughs> I, so. Another way to think about that is you could have a filter that allows a developer to remove the list view, but not a setting <laughs> that allows the average user to do it, right? And then in your documentation about removing it with the filter, then you can be like, this is highly not recommended for this reason. <laughs> So that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Peter asked Alex, uh, is there any way to check if a screen reader is being used and then deliver content dynamically based on that? So for example, default to the list view for screen readers, um, or the grid view for people who are not using a screen reader. No, there is not. And probably uh, never okay, will be. Okay, so so wait, I want I want to ask, how do the overlay plugins <laughs> do that? Because I feel like I have noticed if I'm testing with a website on an overlay plugin, or a website that has an overlay, and I have a screen reader on, it sometimes does different things than if I go to it without a screen reader on. Um, my guess is is that Apple might expose some some type of API for it. I don't think it exists on Windows right now. I don't know. 
Fifth, the overlay companies do a lot of bad things that no one else should copy. <laughs> yeah. And there's a I, lot of things they do that I'm very unsure of how they do. Yeah, I I think I think you might be right. I feel like there is a way to tell if voiceover is being used, kind of like you can tell what someone's system preferences for um color mode is. Um but I don't know that that'd be possible with like NVDA or JAWS. So I'm not sure how reliable it would be. I've been told that it comes down to like privacy issues. And that's why there's never been a standard created around it. Which mm, makes because sense. Because it could allow someone to discriminate against someone who's blind. A lot more easier than it is today. And we've already got plenty of ways today. Mm -hmm. Uh. Before I let you go on, one thing that I noticed, and I don't know if this is the 2024 theme or if this is you all's the blue color, but the white on the light blue text probably fails color contact, contrast. So I would just change the, the colors, your default colors there and either make it a little lighter blue with black text or make it a darker blue. Is there anything on the front end that we missed that you want him to look at? There's two other views um, uh, to be looked at. Read list. Heading top toggle button toggle button table with seven rows and three columns. Row one column one time. Column two event. Row two time column one through three Sunday. Row three time Sunday column one all day. Event Sunday column two closed for Christmas. Row four Sunday time column one through three Monday. Row 5 event Monday column 2 New Year's Day. Row 6 Monday Sunday time column 1 through 3 Thursday. Row 7 event Thursday column 2 how to write accessible website copy. Happy Wood. Edge of table how to write accessible web. Edge of table how to write accessible Thursday Monday Sunday time column 1 10 a.m. dash 11 30 a.m. Edge of table 10 event Thursday column 2 how to write accessible. Yeah. So this is. Um, Go ahead, yeah. Alex. What I'll see is this seems to follow the same DOM structure on every view. It might change things visually, but I'm not actually seeing a whole lot of difference across these views. Yeah, I mean, the biggest difference between this and like the week view or the month view is that you can find the events faster. Yeah. I I think the way I would structure this is it should be in, if it's called a list view, like I would make it a list. And then it's just a debate on if, the list like where the list is and if the list is there's a list under every day right if you're in a week each day so it could just be one item or it could be if it's a really busy calendar five things that happen in one day um or whether it's higher up but i kind of feel like the you could make the actual dates because I noticed that, like, I don't think he can get to those dates in this view, like December 31st, January 1st, January 4th. I don't, I didn't notice those being read out, but those to me should be like a, if the title of the page is an H1 and the date span is an H2, then maybe those days are H3s and then the names of the events are lists below it. Alex, I don't know if you have thoughts about that structure. Yeah, that's that's probably an okay structure for this. Yeah. Calendars in general are very hard for accessibility. Even our friends at the big, big, big calendar companies don't always get it right. Mm hmm We're talking about outside of WordPress big calendar companies. <laughs> yeah, I figured. Uh do you hear about the color that there's there's a color next to the events and I'm curious if you hear that or not when you're going through row five New Year's Day row seven how to write accessible website copy Happy Wood doesn't sound like it okay uh and it okay and it does actually look it has Aria hidden on it which I think is fine um. So basically you can assign a color to different events and then it puts a a dot with what the color is. I think, I don't know if you all have thoughts about where you're going with that long term, but 
if there's thought that that could provide meaning, like I, it's it, they're on events, they're not on the category, so maybe it doesn't provide meaning. But if it does, then that might need to be surfaced in some way. Yeah, it's not a it's not a super popular feature request right now, but we have had a few people request the idea of of global colors in particular ones that could could um kind of attach to WordPress taxonomies. So if your post is in the category of, you know, whatever party and party is orange, then that dot would change accordingly to match your global color. That doesn't exist currently, but that's something kind of in the in the distant future maybe. Mm -hmm. Do you want to look at the back end, Alex? I think we have one more view. Oh, yeah. I think you're right. Choose view. Choose week. Class. Heading level 2, deck 31. Toggle button. Not toggle. Toggle button. Table with 2 rows and 7 columns. Row 1. Column 1. Sun 12. 31. Column 2. Mod 1. 1. Column 3. 2. 1. 2. Column 4. Red 1. 3. See, this is like a table and a table because it says two rows with seven columns, but we can definitely clearly understand that there's more than two rows in this table. No, there is actually only two. It's got oh, two. the first two, row one, two, is column the three. header mod with, one, one, column two, New Year's and Day. then the second row is just one, row one, mod one, one row two, New Year's Day. Edge of table, New Year's okay, Day. Okay, so this does change a little bit depending on the view. Interesting. Two one two column three. Web one three column four. Two one four column five. Ten out of the right accessible website. Cop try one five column sat one six column seven. Edge of table blank. Out of table event times are listed in your low table. Two one toggle button not toggle toggle button not heading level two deck thirty one twenty twenty three Jan six twenty twenty four. So then you would have to go to the next week because this is the week view. Okay, following this now. Toggle toggle but toggle button not press. Table with two rows and seven row two. Mod one eight column two. 219 column 3, web 110 column 4, 10 equalize digital office hours. 0 A E Q U, 21 web 110 column 4 equalize digital office hours, 10 A equalize digital office hours. Yeah, so these are also a little tricky because if you navigate this, 21 web 110 column 4, 10 A equalize digital office hours. The uh, table navigation, it'll just get run right out as 10 A, then it'll start reading because there's no actual punctuation in here to force a screen reader to stop speaking before that so mm -hmm. you can use like a colon or a comma or something to do that because just visually splitting not splitting it onto another line doesn't do it okay i think that's probably about all the feedback that i had I mean, nobody would be actively stopped from using this. Yeah, I think the hardest things are the that they wouldn't know that they could expand to get more details. Yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's interesting and unique about this one is that you it doesn't have its own post type. You can add any post to a calendar and basically it just adds some settings. I have Gutenberg of course turned on on this website in the right hand column on like if you just went to a post to edit a post and maybe you could take a look at those and see if you see any issues with the table, specific no settings there. So I'm looking for what exactly? So if you just go to posts and you could edit any one of the posts or you could add a new post. Calendar com. Calend slash C. Calend slash select the P. Double A. D. M. I. N. Admin. Collapsed. Calendar. WordPress button. Nope. Link. Skip to main. Skip list. Dash list. Updates. Link. Post sub menu list with. Post WordPress. Link. Skip to main. Command row to select. Pi calendar. Blue accessibility audit. Alex Stein and Amber. Title sort ascending. Column two. Pi calendar. Blue Edit. Pi calendar. Edit post pie calendar blue gen accessibility audit. Alex Stein and Amber Hines WordPress accessibility meetup. WordPress document busy. Main landmark heading level one edit post. Welcome to the block editor. Button close. But edit post pie calendar. So I will add the disclaimer like I do every time we go and look at the back end. This might be fairly hard to figure out uh, where the accessibility issues lie because the editor is pretty terrible for accessibility. 
Meaning it might not be your fault. <laughs> it might not be your fault. Editor top bar region link new posts. It is getting better slowly, but the more features that go in, the further we fall behind. So Main all map. of this, all of the settings for this are in the post settings. Editor content region. Editor settings region. List post selected. Block button. Close settings button. Summary heading. Summary button expanded. Select visibility. Public button. Change date. Select template. Sync. Change URL. Add sugar. Stick to the top of the author combo box. Switch the draft button. Move the draft button. Calendar heading. Calendar button collapsed. Expanded. Show on calendar checkbox checked. All day event checkbox not checked. Start date button collapsed. End date button collapsed. Event color occurrence heading. Event color occurrence button collapsed. Categories heading. Categories button collapsed. Tax heading. Tax feature image heading. Feature tax hat event color. End date button collapsed. Start date button collapsed. Yeah, it doesn't read these. Expanded. Time grouping. Hour spin button required editable 07. What do you mean it doesn't read those? It doesn't read what those values are set to. This is going to be fun to navigate. Clear button. <laughs> Calendar. December 18th, 2023. Clear button section. Time grouping. Hours. Minutes. Spin. Um, button. PM button. Date grouping. Day spin button required. Year spin. Calendar. View next month button. December 18th. So to try to explain to people what type of interaction this is, it's like an expandable accordion that traps focus into like a dialogue. But it's not a semantic dialogue at the same time. How were you all building this? Were you using a core component or was this a custom piece? Uh, yeah, I, I believe so. Everything's uh, core. We haven't written any custom components for Gutenberg. Oh, that's heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> we we may have screwed it up at some point along the way, but we tried to use all core stuff. Um, I'm mm -hmm. almost positive it wasn't your fault. Okay. <laughs> so main landmark editor settings read. So if we open this. Expanded time grouping hours spin button required editable zero seven. We get put in this hours field. Obviously, it's set to seven. Blank, 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 blank. And I was expecting that if I press the right arrow, I might get minutes, but that's not going to happen. So we'll I try think tab you have to tab and tab. Yeah. Minutes spin button required editable selected zero zero. A button. PM button. And then, of course, AM, PM, it doesn't tell you which one is selected. Mm -hmm. Date grouping, month combo box, December collapsed. Day spin button required editable selected 18. Year spin button required editable selected 2023. Now that, that works, more or less. Calendar, view previous month button, view next month button, December 18th, 2023, selected button. And this and now also works pretty well. Um, so the biggest issue is the AM PM doesn't announce which one is selected. The other ones all tell you what's selected. The other problem is this. Clear button. Section. Time grouping. Hour spin button. Minute spin button. A button. PM button. Date grouping. Day spin button. Year spin. Calendar. View next month. December 8. Clear button. Section. Time grouping. Minutes. A button. I'm going to sit here and tab around that all night, and I'm never going to find a way to get out of there. Yeah, there's a keyboard trap. It's because... Developers these days have assumed that everybody knows how to press escape. Main landmark, editor settings region, start date button collapsed. Don't ever make assumptions for your users. So there should also be a close button in that pop-up in addition to, so that it can be closed in that way. Preferably, there would be a button that says save or at least something in there that would make users not think closing that would lose what they just went in and, you know, did, but. Yeah, I'll admit, actually, it took me, when I was adding these the first time, it took me a minute to figure out that I could just pick what I wanted and then click away and it would go away. But this, um, this is an overall UX problem with Gutenberg because since there's no committing function like a submit button and it all gets handled when you publish or save, it's very unclear to people if clicking close or clicking away actually won't lose their changes. So there's that. Mm -hmm. The other like thing that I noticed here is 
So visually it does show, and I don't know if you were to read without doing the tab key, if you would hear it, it says the start date and the end date. It does not show the time. And I mean, I think blind people need that surface too, but I also, like I, I had to go, cause then I was like, oh, what if I need to change the time? Like I wanted to see it all without having to click on those to make sure that I, what I had selected. And date button collapsed. Event color recurrence heading. Event color recurrence button collapsed. Event color recurrence. Yeah, I should say and recurrence, but it's an ampersand, so I don't know. Yep, it's not going to read that. Expanded. Event color picker button collapsed. Text color picker button collapsed. This event repeats checkbox not checked. Categories heading. Categories button collapsed. And see, focus is not actually trapped in this panel, which is just leads to more unpredictability. This is text yeah, color I picker think, button collapsed. I think those are like regular Gutenberg panels. Expanded. Color slider saturation zero. Brightness zero. Hue slider zero. Alpha slider 100. Color format combo box hex collapsed. Button copy. Hex color edit as autocomplete selected 0000000. 000 000 000 000 000 000. Color slider saturation zero. Hue slider alpha slider 100. All these work with the exception of a button to close it. Main landmark editor. So yeah, that's looks looks like some so, Gutenberg improvements, maybe. Yeah, but honestly, actually, I've seen like custom stuff like this where those toggles weren't actually except like <laughs> they were divs and stuff. So I applaud you all that it said it's a checkbox and whether or not it's checked, even though visually to us it doesn't look like a checkbox, like it it functions. So I think that's really good. Yes, it does function, which is great because it, it means that at least some of our components are following accessibility standards. And that's that's mm -hmm. nice to see. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think too, like I've seen where people build stuff in here and it's not that it's Gutenberg didn't do it, it's that they didn't. So so I think it's good that you guys yeah. used whatever was coming out of Gutenberg to be consistent. Uh, so Billy has said in the chat, um, and Billius is also a screen reader user every day. He says, this sounds pretty good to me compared to other calendars that I've used before. So. Uh, yeah, I'll second that. Uh, That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Den Deniv asked, and uh, I'm not sure if this was on the front end or the back end, but said, do the previous and next buttons have accessible names? So I think on the picker, on the back end, I did hear next month, pre previous month. Oh, front end. Uh, so he clarified front end. So the answer on that was no, those do not currently have accessible names. But we talked about that being a title attribute. So yeah. Um, the only other thing is there's a very minor settings page, which you could find under settings if you wanted to look at that, Alex. Out of reach, editor top bar region, new post link. Have we ever finished one of these kind of early? <laughs> <laughs> no. Skip to main content. You know, with 13 items. I think one of the things that is neat about this plugin is that it is very simple, as they said before. Um, and to some degree, I feel like if you're building a plugin, like that's a good way to start because it makes it easier. Like you can get all this stuff accessible, right? And then just build with, with two items, link settings. on a Definitely. solid foundation. Definitely. Yeah. Link accessible out of list submenu, link accessibility, checklist with eight items, link pie calendar, link privacy, link pie, pie calendar, link skip to main content, main landmark pie calendar settings, heading level two. Oh, I found an issue. <laughs> heading level two for title. No, don't do it. Heading level one, follow heading order. Even in the admin. Even in the admin. Link logout. Main heading level two license. Enter your license key to activate Pi Calendar Pro. License key. Enter your license key. Edit protected button. Activate license. Heading level two allowed post types. Don't float buttons is in line next to submit fields. That's not good. Keep these block level. So you're saying the activate license button, you want it to be below, not next to the field. 
because for people who are using arrow key navigation, this becomes a little fun to get to. If any post types are selected here, Pi Calendar's event fields will show on the post types. This is useful if you have events on your site. Note, if a post type has posts with event data, disabling that post type will not prevent them from showing on the calendar. Allowed post types. Post. Checkbox not checked. Post. Allowed post checkbox not checked. Post. Allowed post checkbox not checked. Okay, so this is a problem. There's no field set or legend on these, so if someone just came in contact with this checkbox, they would not get any information about what they are actually allowing They hear yeah, are post. you familiar with those field sets, Elijah? Uh, apparently not. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I am I can put I'm a... familiar with the concept, but I haven't obviously dove into it for these settings pages. Yeah, so I put a, a link to the MDN docs for awesome. field sets. The other thing you should do is reverse the positioning of these labels and checkboxes. It's always recommended to have checkbox first thin label just makes things easier the other thing that i might comment on uh these are styled to be round which suggests you can only select one that is going to be a radio input but it seems like it, you could select multiple right Right. I noticed that as well. I don't think that we style them. They should just be HTML checkboxes. Um, I'll check on my local. But yeah, it's interesting. Actually, I just opened it and I see them as square. But when I look yeah. at Alex's screen, they look round. So what browser are you in? Chrome? I'm in Firefox tonight. Firefox. Check Firefox. <laughs> That, yeah, like, that's sure. the fun thing about some of this, right? It's browser specific. <laughs> and operating system specific and screen reader mm -hmm. specific. And yep. Yeah. Check Firefox attachments. on Windows. Check out heading level to enable add to calendar links. Select providers for add to calendar links in the event popover. Note Apple and Outlook both use link calendar links API to generate files that your visitors can download. Add to calendar links. Google. Mm. Checkbox checked. Office 365. Checkbox checked. Outlook web. Checkbox checked. Apple. Checkbox checked. Outlook. Checkbox checked. Button save changes. Content info land. Very easy page. I see a problem, Mine? I believe. Sorry. What's the problem? That, that, you see? that calendar link and the description above those fields did not, uh, it didn't indicate it was a link, I don't think. It I did. It. Okay, good. In landmark calendar links API link. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, do you all have any other questions while we have Alex here? Uh, I for sure do. Um, I know when I was working on some accessibility stuff for Oxygen, it was really helpful to have recommendations from you uh, on themes and things that did things right. So I guess, Alex, do you have a calendar interface that works really well for you that we could take inspiration from while we're improving all the stuff you found? Okay, so I don't work in WordPress anymore. I might be the wrong person <laughs> to answer this. What about well, any, calendar, any calendar? Like, right? yeah, it doesn't have to be WordPress. Uh, answer still the same. No. <laughs> okay. So, so are they all pretty, pretty rough? Uh, there are calendars out there that are really, really bad. Hmm. Um. I mainly interact with my calendar through Microsoft Outlook, and even that's not accessible out of the box. There's been a lot of screen reader coding to deal with that. Okay. So Billy has said to try full calendar, all one word. That's actually the the library we're using to power by calendar. So um, oh. a lot of the, the front end stuff, anything outside of the modal, mostly is stock full calendar stuff with slight modifications. Um, so for a lot of the notes that I've taken from tonight, we're going to have to dig into full calendars code and make corrections there, which hopefully we can then open pull requests with pull calendar and help them in uh, full calendar and help them improve for everybody that uses that library. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, giving back is always great. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I think I think for me, like the biggest thing too would be rethinking that list view to not be a table. Right. And then and then you mentioned um never getting rid of the list view, right? Is that something you would envision being available concurrently with whatever other view was chosen, like visually side by side or like above and below each other? No. Mm, I, I, Alex, you might have thoughts about that, but I don't think you would want to have the two visible at the same time because that's right. just like adds extra noise right. for people. To, and it's like repeating the same information. Um, yeah. One thing that you could do that is making, you know, and again, sometimes this is like provide information in your documentation, like have mm -hmm. an accessibility page in your documentation that's like best practices for your users. Um, but if someone is using it, like let's say a university wanted to use this and universities all have to follow section 508 and like have a lot more accessibility. So they might want to, like, I don't know if you necessarily have to do this, but they might want to above the calendar, if mm. for some reason they didn't have the list view as default, have a message that's like, for the most accessible view, <laughs> switch to the list view, right? Like I've seen things where we've been working on remediations that were mandated by the Office of Civil Rights and the Office of Civil Rights is very much like, if you provide messaging above the thing so someone can get it and you tell them how to get the accessible alternative, then that's sufficient for the Office of Civil Rights, which is part of the Department of Education. Now, that's I think great. it should default to the accessible option. <laughs> yeah, don't, but, don't, don't even give me a platform to start running on that. Yeah, I mean, you definitely think it should default to the accessible option, right? <laughs> Yeah, because, you know, I mean, we can look at some of the biggest companies out there. Oh, if you have problem using their website, please call this number. Like, really? But aren't, aren't yeah. you just like admitting to the world that uh, <laughs> you are ready to be sued? <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think there's like a weird line that plugin developers have to walk on that, right? Because you're going to get a lot of requests for different things. Um and for us, like we will sometimes think about, you know, we make decisions based on accessibility. Like someone asked us once, like this is a really good example. With our plugin, we don't have anything that's visible on the front end. And we've had multiple clients say that they want one of those little round accessibility icons. They're like, we know we shouldn't use an overlay, but for some reason they think having the little floating bug on their website communicates to their customers that they care about accessibility and it's going to help them like right and we've had multiple people be like we just want that to be a setting so we can turn it on and they'll put the thing and then it'll pop up a message if they click on it about accessibility <laughs> because i'm like well it's not an overlay um but we don't want to do it because those floating bugs can really cause a problem for low vision users who zoom in and then it blocks other things on the screen um, and so we've just said no. And so I think sometimes you have to make decisions and just say, like, we know this isn't going to be good or, you know, like make the default. And then if you have to have a filter, then only a developer can override it. And in theory, hopefully in your documentation, the developer has read why you don't advise doing this. PM. And then if we want to get to the practical aspect there, since we have enough time to get into the practical aspect of that. Uh, for the, mm -hmm. all the users out there who want that little floating, annoying icon to tell people how much they care about accessibility, mainly the people who want that so much are the ones who don't have good accessibility almost every single time without fail. Yeah. Like, don't think tell you... me you have good accessibility. Show me you have good accessibility. Yeah, if the website just works, then you don't really need the floating icon, right? <laughs> I think another thing too, right? Like we were talking about color contrast. Um, I think there's a lot of people who will just do their own, like they'll recolor it to match their brand, but a good practice, and this is the way it is in themes, if you want to get the accessibility ready tag, your out of box colors have to have past color contrast. And you know that people might change it. Um, I One thing I wasn't sure about in yours is I saw that there was like 
a text color setting. I actually turned it on for one of the events, but then I didn't see where it, it did, like where it actually changed the text color. So I'm not sure about that, but that might be something to think about, um, you know, if you want to actually allow people to change the color of the text, or if you do, like that's a, a prime one for, you know, like in Gutenberg, if you choose certain color combinations that will warn you. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it would be possible for you to put a warning on there, you know, if they choose a text color that is like super light gray or whatever, that it's not going to yeah. pass for contrast. Yeah. So the text color would only apply to all day events, I believe. So it would use the, the normal color as the background of the all day event. Um, so we should have enough insight to check the contrast, uh, and that's something I have a little bit of experience with. So that's something we'll look at for sure. Yeah, I might have, well, now I have to go look. So that would be like the all day events on the, like the grid view. Yeah, the ones with the solid background color. Oh, okay, so I, I didn't try playing around with that on a uh, all day event. Yeah, so that, that might be a good one to like put a warning on. Mm-hmm. Uh, Peter put a link in the chat for everyone about um, showing what the short code was and a link over to the short code options in your documentation. So yeah, that was said, really helpful, Peter. Um, the what what he shared was the short code that makes the list view the default view upon loading. And of course, right now there's not functionality in the plugin to prevent or hide the other options without you know CSS to to manually hide it. Um, but yeah, that's a great way to, to make it default to list view right now. But also to mm -hmm. add to that, for anyone thinking about doing that, based on this demonstration tonight, the list views are not great. So that's something <laughs> I, I'm almost thinking we may need to um, hook into full calendar and create our own list view with just accessibility in mind so that we can tell people that's the one to use if you're you know using this on so your site. This is an interesting question, though, because you're making your own short code. Does the list view actually have to use full calendar at all? Yeah. Like, yeah, I get so why you calendar... would use their API to create the grid and everything. Right. But maybe yeah, so you it... could query and just build it out. We could. Full calendar does handle a lot of the logic that comes along with calendars. In oh, general, for like past as as... events, future events, and, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Date and like calculations, time zones. things like that time zone stuff. Yeah. It would, it would be a little, it would be daunting to rewrite that kind of logic, uh, in, in this scope of a project, but I, I'm certain that there's a way for us to write our own views for it. And I really am interested in digging into that now that I've seen how non navigable the, the tables are the way they're structured now. So Alex, from my perspective, just to, to understand kind of where we lie in, in uh, you know, on our typical grade scale score, like if you came to a website with this calendar, is it is it functional? Would you get what you needed out of it? Or is it essentially as worthless as all the other calendar plugins? You would not get the ability to view the full event information. That right. is okay. That is the only preventing factor right now that would really hinder somebody actively okay that's good to know that's that's fixable for sure so mm -hmm. no it's not like if i was going to say the best the next best out there is probably google calendar and dead last is microsoft because their calendar is just awful i mean terrible it is so busy I, i'm not sure people with sight could figure the thing out <laughs> agreed yeah so yeah it, as long as you don't imitate microsoft you should be fine yeah uh bilius says that calendly is also good do you have any thoughts on calendly alex yes it is good it works it's very very simple yeah, so that's more like on the picking side, but you could explore like what their month view looks like or day view mm. or yeah, yeah. 
So, um, and I would recommend, I don't know if you only have a Mac, but browser stack now you can emulate a Windows machine and use NVDA if you don't have a PC. And I would recommend oh. testing with that um, because more screen reader users are going to be on a Windows device than a right. Mac. So I actually do have a question for Alex about NVDA. Um, I would love to dive into learning to use it properly. And I know that might be hard as a sighted user, uh, but I wondered if you have any recommendations uh, for me as a you know plugin developer to learn to use it properly to audit as we're developing, but also just as a user of NVDA to learn from kind of square one. Um, let's see. NVDA user docs are pretty good. Okay. And really, I mean, I'm sure there's probably some websites out there that walk you through basic usage of it, but mm -hmm. I was always a technical boring type who just stared at documentation and went figured stuff out. So sure. <laughs> so we did last um, February, we uh, did an event with Carroll School for the Blind or Carroll Center for the Blind. Um, and one of their teachers who teaches people to use screen readers did a course for us on NVDA. Um, and I can, I know we've been talking about trying to like break it up and make it available to people. So maybe that's something that we could do. Um, and I can let you know and other people who are watching if they're interested. Yeah, that would be super helpful because I think screen readers are are daunting just because it's a whole different mode of consuming information. And a lot of developers are stretched thin. And of course, they should learn to use it so that they can test for people that need it. But having some kind of like simplified route to learning to use it properly so that we know we're using it in a way that's going to catch the issues that people that are using it every day will run into, that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like um, FJ said that Polypane development browser has accessibility testing as a feature. Uh, FJ uses it um, and would be interested if anyone has any experiences with it. I have not used Polypane. I don't know if anyone else here, if any of you all have used Polypane. I, I did briefly, but it, I, I preferred Axe Dev Tools. I feel like Polypane had too many bells and whistles or something. I don't remember exactly, but I wasn't super happy with it. And then Deneb shared a link on his website to screen reader ropes course for maybe cool. learning screen readers. So that might be a useful resource as well. Definitely. So we don't have any other open questions in the Q&A. Um, Jonathan, Elijah, do you want to let people know where they can go to learn more about PyCalendar or get in touch with you if they want to follow up afterwards? Yeah, so of course we have our website, pycalendar.com. Uh, there's a contact form on there. You're more than welcome to to fill it out, especially if you're here, if you have any questions and uh, happy to do a little video demo if you have a specific question. I think we covered a fairly fairly um, comprehensive you know, use case of, of how you would use it. We like to tell people you would, you would get started using it in just a couple minutes. And I think hopefully seeing it, you know, uh, this evening was enough to get started with it if you're interested. Oh, and also I should mention as well, we have a really capable free version. What we saw tonight was the pro version, um, but the free version is available on the WordPress repo. And that one is very, very similar to what we saw, just minus recurring events, essentially, and, and a couple other bells and whistles. And Alex, how can people follow up with you? Uh, you can follow up with me on LinkedIn. I'm just Alex Stein on LinkedIn, and I try to respond there as quick as possible. And it's uh, S-T-I-N-E. Yes. I wanted so, to just quickly say how much I appreciate this. It's such a useful insight into just 
a, a totally different perspective on our plugin because clearly Elijah and I have tried to do some, um, some you know, uh, accessibility testing. But had we done it properly, we would have seen that the you know event link doesn't take you to the modal properly and you know focus trapping and those sorts of things that feel so silly to have overlooked. But without your help, Alex, we we wouldn't have uncovered that. So just wanted to say thank you very much. That was incredible. Thank you. No problem at all. Happy to help. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we very much appreciate that you came and you're willing to do it. And um, as I've told you behind the scenes, like we've been evaluating doing this to switch from our calendar, which I think is a little bit more complex than what we actually need. So I'm excited to see where you all take this and maybe roll it out on my website in the spring. So certainly hope so. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to sign off. I, you all are free to leave, but I don't close Zoom until I see all the captioning go through because it's on a little bit of a delay. So there's like a moment of silence and awkward smiling and waving. Um, but thank you, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone has a happy new year. And don't forget that we will be back on January 4th. Uh, so right after the new year um, for a talk on accessible copywriting with Abby Wood. Thanks so much. Thanks. See you. Bye-bye.